If you are in Orlando and you are having a heck of a time finding properties that hit your cash flow goals, I want to talk to you because I am here to help Orlando landlords hit their numbers. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and today I am talking to people in Orlando because my guy Brian is an investor from Orlando, and I believe Brian has a similar problem to a lot of you. The Orlando market is expensive. As I speak to you, it is 2022. <laughs> Everything is expensive, right? See all the little Biden stickers <laughs> on the gas pump? It's, it's like he did that to everything, not just gas prices, right? But it's not all his fault, and we don't even have to go into a tangent about that, right? Let's go, Brandon. What? Who said that? What wasn't me. Anyway, all I'm saying is my man Brian has got an issue with trying to build his business, getting Orlando rental properties. The pricing, even though Orlando's a great city, folks, I'm not saying it's not. Nothing wrong with Orlando. I'm just saying sometimes it makes sense to invest – using the numbers, not the emotions, okay? And that's what Brandon's doing. And I happen to have a line on markets and properties that are going to be more profitable and of a lower cost than what you could find in Orlando. And that's why Brian hooked up with me. We've been working to build him a portfolio. In today's property, I have a team on the ground to handle all the day-to-day -day work. I think you're going to love this one, dog. We're talking 18 k in gross rents, totally turnkey, only 25 k out of your pocket. Let's go, Brandon. Ah, it's not what I meant to say. I meant to say right after this. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. Let's pick up the property. This one is a killer deal, man. I love this one, right? Look at this thing. She might, might not look so pretty on the eyes, but once you get to know her, folks, she's got a good soul. You know what I'm saying? All right, this duplex, nice solid C-grade duplex, nice wood here, looking fresh, looking new. Third key, man. And they've gone in and done everything, and they renovated it the same way I would have renovated it, right? Fans of the show, y'all hear me talk. You go dark floors. People love them dark floors. Agreeable gray walls, white trim. That's what you do, right? If you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I like the color blue better, blah, blah, blah. Bro, it's not about you, okay? It's about what is popular, right? It's about neutral tones. It's about not picking out the favorite color of somebody, it's picking out a color that most people are going to be cool with, right? And statistically speaking, that's going to be this layout, right? White kitchen cabinets, all that, looking good. This is a fresh unit, man. We got to do nothing here, it appears, other than pop a for rent sign in the front yard, market this bad boy on Holton Wise TV, and you will get yourself some solid tenants, man. Looks like the seller has gone in and done it all, right? Truly. Good-looking property for us, folks. And what we're going to do, uh, we're going to be able to get a... Oh, by the way, <coughs> hard to see, but you can see the mechanicals in the background all new, right? All newer. Look how new those all look, right? Two furnaces, two hot water tanks. It's very important that these are new, by the way, folks. Just so you know, furnaces cost about three to $3,500 a piece right now. So if you got to do two of them, do the math. That's seven k. Hot water tanks, about a G, it's like 1200 Prices keep going up, right? It's 2022. Welcome to the COVID world. Welcome to Biden's inflation. Anyway, moral of the story is all this stuff that you see here that's new, you're looking at like $9,000 worth of stuff, right? Hot water tanks, they last about 15 years. Furnaces last about 30, right? So they did a lot of work for you, right? This thing is in solid shape. This is an earner, man. This is probably one of the better investments on the market, right? 
Solid C-grade neighborhood. I like the neighborhood. 228 Gates, Elyria. Two days on the market. We're going to need to move quick, right? This will fly. It's going to have multiple offers. Now, they're asking 100, right? And we're going to get. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? For, or they're asking 110, rather. What are we going to get? Well, we're going to slap two tenants in there. Cash paying or Section 8. Both work well in this neighborhood. This is a neighborhood where the neighborhood, in my opinion, is solid enough where you get a decent chunk of qualified cash paying tenants. But on top of that, love me some Section 8 because there ain't nothing better than government guaranteed cheddar. So it works well with both. Those are really the sweet spot markets, markets where you get the widest possible tenant base, right? That's how you keep your tenancy uh, vacancies down, folks, right? If you get into some neighborhoods that are so high risk, your really only choice is Section 8 because if you try to go with just cash paying tenants, you're going to deal with just way too many turnovers and evictions and not payment of rent, right? And then you get to other neighborhoods that are real nice and you don't really want to go Section 8 because you have really nice high quality tenant base, but the price to rent ratios are usually all out of whack. So this is like the C spot. If people often ask me questions like, yo, is this good? Is this good? Is that good? Is this bad? Right? Is this neighborhood good? Is this neighborhood bad? I don't I don't like those questions. I don't like the question of is this neighborhood good or is this neighborhood bad? I think that's a flawed question, right? Why is that a flawed question? Good for what? Bad for what? Right? I, it's not a thing, right? Like all right. This particular neighborhood is good in the uh, aspect that I think this is the sweet spot for investing in long-term buy and hold real estate, right? Like if you're asking me if I think this is good for a buy and hold investor who wants that sweet spot of low prices, high price to rent ratio, wide tenant base, I think it's great. I love buying rental properties in neighborhoods like this. I happen to love Elyria quite a bit from a rental property perspective. But if you're asking me, like, do I want to live in this house? No, motherfucker, I'm rich. I don't want to live in this house. Shit. So I don't like the answer or the question of, like, good or bad, right? Because of that, because of that, what I did is I created the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, right? And I got a link to it in the show notes below. It's also available on the tools and resources section of HoltonWise.com. You can also Google it. And what I did is I graded every neighborhood on an 8F scale. A being high price low risk f being low price high risk okay so like good bad it varies based on good for what bad for what varies based upon the investor right so utilize that guide to see where your sweet spot is right you might be an investor who's like dude i want the cheapest deals possible and i only want section eight well then hey man for you you might be able to get something like this a little bit cheaper and only go Section 8 if you go to like a D or an F neighborhood. But you might be like, oh, I don't want risk. And you might want to go up to like a B neighborhood, right? So look into that. With all that said, this is like a very, very high C grade neighborhood, which in my opinion is a nice sweet spot for long-term cash flow investing, okay? So I truly do like that. And this is going to fly. But 110. I would love in a perfect world to be able to get you this property 100K. Now, here's the deal. I think there's going to be multiple offers. So if you really want it, don't be afraid to go above 100K. But I think 100K would be the sweet spot. It'd be nice to see you get that. But I cannot guarantee that, of course. I can't guarantee anything. But it's going to be tough because I know there's going to be a lot of people who are very excited to see it renovated, to see all those new mechanicals, right? This is what the numbers would look like uh, on an annualized basis at 100K. 1,500 comes in, 781.25 would be your average NOI out of that, right? So of the 18K that comes in every year, an average would be just under 10K in pure profit, right? Even though the furnace is new, the hot water tanks are new, you see that I have you saving money towards capital expenditures, right? I have you saving 900 a year for that, 900 a year for vacancy, 900 a year for repairs and maintenance. Those are all $900 that go into your pocket, but I don't want you to consider them to be profit because in 15 years, I'm like, hey, dog, you need to give me a grant because we got to fix your hot water tank, things of that nature. Or eventually, a tenant will move out and those beautiful, agreeable gray walls you see right now are going to need to get repainted, stuff like that, right? Pure $9,375, though, in profit is what I anticipate. If you pay $100, you only put down $25K. Bank kicks in $75, should result in a 22.3% cash-on-cash return. That, folks, 
is a solid deal. Very hard to achieve numbers that look better than this on a property of this quality level with this age of mechanicals in a neighborhood that I consider to be high C, low B. I think this is a killer deal. Works at 100 perfectly. Yes, your returns will go down slightly if you go above that, but I think based on the competition, all the investors coming from all over the world, you may want to bid more than 100, but I can submit any offer you like. Let me know what you want to do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.